a mighty New Jersey turnout to honor a Marine who has been awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor for Heroism on Guadalcanal, Sergeant John Bazzaloni of Raritan, New Jersey. As long as I can remember, I've heard about my famous Uncle John. That's my grandmother and grandfather with him after he came home in 1943. And Raritan, where I grew up, has never forgotten its hometown hero. There is a parade in his name every year, and just being related makes you kind of a celebrity. The Bazalone family with Donald, brother of John. There's a statue of him on Main Street, a bridge named after him, and we wrote reports about him in school. We learned that after receiving the Medal of Honor, he was sent around the country selling war bonds. All my buddies overseas and the front lines, they really appreciate everything wonderful people are doing by backing the attack and buying these war bonds. Uncle John became the poster boy for the war effort, appearing in magazines all around the country. All of a sudden, women were writing him love letters, and what he had for dinner was news. There was even a comic book about him. Sergeant John Bazzaloni, I'm very happy to welcome you. He was a national hero, a soldier's hero, and certainly a family hero. In my household, it seemed like it was all I ever heard about, especially from my Aunt Mary. She'd fill me with stories how Hollywood producers would hand their cards to John, wanting him to star in their pictures. But for a while there, it seemed to me he already was a star, touring the country with movie stars like Virginia Gray and Donald O'Connor. And then he decided to go back to the war and was killed on Iwo Jima. And growing up, that's a lot of what I knew about my famous uncle. But now I needed to know more and to talk to those who actually knew him and to do it while there's still time. Remember, here was a Marine who didn't have to come back to Iwo Jima at all. He had done it. He had the Congressional Medal of Honor. He doesn't need anything. He had glory of its, in its zenith. And as I began to listen to these men, I think that's what means so much to so many, his going back. On Guadalcanal, he'd become a hero. But returning to the war and Iwo Jima, made him a legend. He was a celebrity in the Marine Corps, a celebrity. You know, the day he got killed, went all, all over the island, even when we were on Hill 382 over there. Everybody knew Barcelona got it, Barcelona got it, Barcelona got it, where? At the foot of Sarabachi. You know? Everybody knew that Barcelona was killed. The thing that really stays in your mind are the guys that didn't come back. And he was bald, he shaved, well, he and all the cuckoos in his outfit had decided to shave all their hair off, you know, so they wouldn't get cooties. They were nuts, <laughs> all of them. He was laying with his helmet half off. I just sat there and I looked at him, and that's where I saw him last. And there were bodies all over the place. I, I didn't talk about Iwo Jima for a long, long time, because if you have never smelled death, if you've never been so goddamn scared that you could hardly uh, navigate, but you made yourself do it anyway, uh, you can't realize what it was really like. It changes the person. You become a different person, really. I haven't told my sons, I never told them about the war, but there's a part of your brain that, that'll never, never forget these things. But you close the door on them, and you close it shut. And that's how I, that's how we all survived, to go ahead with our lives. And mysteriously, some feel the need to physically return and stand on battlefields where they and their brothers fought and died so long ago. For some of these uh, veterans, who were 18, 19, 20 years old at that time. It is a very emotional experience. You remember your buddies who were standing next to you and killed and you wondered why it didn't happen to you. When you put your feet in that, that black sand, 
somehow you get an emotional rush of, of memories that you hadn't thought about for some time. And I have had a number of occasions when one of the survivors will come to me and, and shake my hand and say, General, I wasn't sure I wanted to come out here, but I'm so glad I did. And with that, he puts his head on my shoulder and cries. And my last time out here with this group, by the time I got my airplane, my jacket was soaked on this side from tears. There were guys who had sought, and I think most of them found closure in coming back. I began this journey to find my uncle and soon realized that I wouldn't be making it alone. That I am in fact only one among hundreds, if not thousands of others around the world, making the same pilgrimage, and who are all going back.